driveway marker over oh, my yeah. mother's. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just thought I was depressed. It's pretty good. I take you off the list now. I hope that works for you. Oh, we'll yeah, I came home. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got a big uh, problem. Donut. Of course, my dad couldn't be Donut. Not enough donuts. Yep. The only one we're missing is Molly, and she is coming from the class. Yeah. Let's get rolling. She said, uh, again, that we have three items in the middle. Then, on, uh, to add a person for the Zoning Board of Appeal, what I put there, I didn't get it to Linda, but I do have a name, <coughs> if you want me to wait. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. In correspondence, we have uh, White Place News Letter and the Charter Communications Letter. Unfinished business, we have a motion to approve the policy on the allowable action of the agenda items. Again, pretty hot and dry. Uh, discussion on language for our city council videos are to be handled. We had a little difficulty getting the committee uh, meeting date, so we have one scheduled. I believe it's the 21st. Cool. Uh, discussion on reinstating the council finance committee. Put that on there. Mm -hmm. We'll have some discussion tonight. Okay. okay. Discussion on waiving the police fees for the 2014 Red Final Festival bill. Um, as I said, we talked about it last month. Um, the biggest issue was the, uh, the, the one sentence in the, in the uh, memo, the, the letter that the Discussion on the city computer system that, that, that's on here. That's a request of council from last meeting, so Rich West and Warner Island have to be here. Uh -huh. And the marriage business, uh, appointment to a committee to negotiate a new contract for the Red Red Final Festival Board. Uh -huh. Sunday, you have. I haven't heard anyone yet. Okay. Well, I told you. But yeah, I haven't gotten any. I did um, put it in writing. I did right. put it in writing. The question I had from the public is that it has to be council members or it can be nine council members involved? Well, it's a business between the city and the council, or the city and an outside. So I would say the city met our council members. They're the ones going to manage the money. And then I would request that um, Officer Kelly also yes. put some input into it because we no longer have a police department. Um, <coughs> whoever amongst the board here, I have one commitment. I said I would like to. So, I'd like to have at least three. I will as well. I would just, you know, offer, I, I personally I don't know that that's the best place for the sergeant to be on that committee. I mean, he, okay. he can, as the staff does, we can, as we do with the, comp, with the uh, festival already, we sit down and talk about their needs and okay. all of those things. I think. It, it just might be an inappropriate place for him because he's not a. We request member. him as a, um, a consultant. Certainly, you know, we can have just if you have questions, just give them to me. We'll get them. That okay. Answer. That that's. I just wanted to make sure because I know there'll be questions of what about law enforcement, and we no longer have that. Yeah. Yep. And and that's gonna. I can tell you, it'll be just like it was before that we won't know until we know what the needs are. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, that sounds yeah. well we, you know, any any other members just get with me, let me know. Okay. Dan Clark. Yeah, I will. Um nine A a resolution to in support of placing the Main Street bridge on the uh, priority list for the state. That's a triple bridge funding we're seeking. We've been on how many times? This is a third. Third time. This is this is a yearly to add to the list each year. 
That's all it is. It's just to add to the list. And for what it's worth, oh, uh, we have the worst bridge in Kent County. <laughs> Come on. Well, if we're going to be bad, it moves us to the front of the list getting it fixed, right? No. In theory? Well, one of the things that we've, we've talked about, I don't know if we can do it this budget here, but um, it's just, all it is is a 5% match on the app the city. And as with many other grants, if you put in more, those are the ones that normally get mm -hmm. funded. So I don't know if we can do it this year, uh, perhaps maybe next year, if we don't get funding right away. Uh, placement of an informational sign on city owned property. There's a, uh, a group of individuals that are interested in putting up a sign by the floor and the behind the fire barn. In fact, if you look closely, it's already there. Uh, that was an oversight on the sign installer part because yeah. they were told not to put it up. And they did. And so, um, but Jack Clark, who's been spearheading this, will be here tonight to talk about that. And the only thing that I, would, I think it's a great idea, it's a double-sided sign. It, it's patterned after the, the state of Michigan historical markers, but it's not authorized by the state of Michigan. Uh, the, only, the only issue that we would have would be that it should be uh, placed uh, where the DPW says it should be placed so we can get our equipment around and, and maintain around that area. I don't seem to be able to get the agenda. Hmm. Can I know in years, years when I was there, the city council approved a sign for that? I like the whole thing. He's been working on, working on it for five or six years. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just see it on that. Then uh, the next is purchasing 20 trees from Great Lakes Landscape. Okay. It's a budgeted item, and it's to replace some trees that we've lost over the years. Um, the next two D and E are resolutions to authorize the issue of uh, sanitary and water supply system resident bonds. We have, we have an existing bond out there that. Uh, they looked at it and said, it don't make sense to refinance. You can, you can save about almost $300,000 over the life of the bond. So there, there, we'll have an individual that has been working with us on this project as well as our bond, the city's bond attorney here tonight to explain um, the resolutions and the ordinance. So it is, it's a great idea. Like I said, we're going to save almost $300,000 over, over the life of the bonds, which is wonderful. That sewer bond has been refinanced once before. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It has. Jerry, yeah. uh, is, is this the same discussion we were having a couple of months ago, or maybe last month, that uh, we were looking to yep. refinance? Yes, this is the one. Okay. Yep, this is the one. All right, good. And it's been back and forth. Uh, we had some issues that's, uh, that we had to address uh, in a legal fashion, so it's just taking us a little time to make sure we have the right. Um, DPW's finally found a bucket truck. Yay. And, uh, it's, it's passed, uh, muster with, <coughs> with Bill, who was the one <laughs> spearheading it. So, uh, if Bill says it's good, it's good. Amazing. Uh, one from okay. DPW is wanting to purchase a, a jet nozzle. And then, uh, the Chamber of Commerce is asking, Council's uh, council to approve the Renaissance Fair as a community. <coughs> they need that status because they're going to, uh, as they did last year, offer camping in Morgan Park and they have outdoor uh, fires down there to And then uh, the last is a motion to consider a, a signal information denial appeal from uh, Tom Powley again. Um, I don't see him here tonight. But um, I'm I'm hoping he's going to forget about it sometime in the future, very near future. So what's his deal? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Has he got some sort of a statement to the no, Nothing. I received an email from Mr. Powley because at one point I did ask him what it was that he had wanted. I said maybe council could assist him with it. Um, at one point in his return letter to me, he wanted to stand up in public and tell that he was wrong. Did you do that one? <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding at all. Wrong about 
I don't know. I don't think we're going to stop it. We have four minutes. We told him, we suggested that he's been here once before. We made a say that, and then we could be done. And we also suggested that he be released. He wants us to say it, or him? I don't know. It don't matter. I say, let's not rise to the occasion. Right, right. I would like to talk to him. I got you. Who's sorry? Who's sorry? Find us then. That's a change of the position. Bob, uh, back me up on this if you remember. When we talked to him that time when he was here for that meeting, the day after, and we asked him what he was trying to get to, what his goal was, he didn't really seem to have a goal. It was more like it was like uh, he he just was interested in this. To, he wanted to help us get over whatever we were dealing with as a council. He never mentioned that in my memory. In fact, when we talked about some of the issues, no, no, I'm no, I'm just just interested, curious. So yeah. he's kind of. Uh, I, I'd be happy to that email. Clarification. Mr. Manager, he wasn't on the city council. He'd never been a member. Well, he were, right? Well, the only, the only, I, I never had any face to face contact with him when I was in Alpena. And the only contact I had with him was uh, through emails. And he was a tenant, and we had a rental inspection program. And um, our rental inspector went into his apartment with his landlord based on arrangements the landlord had made. And he didn't think that was right. Oh. Okay. I see. So okay. that's the only contact I've ever had with him. That was just all through email. Huh. <laughs> so oh, that's it. What is what is the what is he requesting specifically tonight? Step aside. It's denial. The second part is the denial that you've already given them. Uh -huh. The first part he's um, had requested all of the legal bills. I sent him the legal bills, uh -huh. and he wants um, an open meetings act report that was referenced in um, the legal bills. Mm -hmm. And of course, I denied them because I didn't have it. It's not in the city records. So when I got the appeal, I contacted Jeff Sluggett, and the only thing he could come up with was that it might be uh, an email that he received from Thad, which is included in your packet. And I'm not sure if that, I have a file like this. Yeah, he's, um, I'm not sure if he's received that or not. So what um, I'm recommending is that you um, grant him that email. You will reverse my denial of that particular appeal, and I'll send him that email. That. The second part is um, something you've already denied him. I don't know why he's appealing that again. Again, it's something that he refers to as an Open Meetings Act issue, and it was a legal um, memo between the attorney and the mayor. It's but he got all the, the bills from Sluggett and all that. And he emailed it to me, and I looked at it, and it seemed like everything was there. If there was any information you wanted, he could have gotten it out of that. He, what it was referenced as is an open meeting act um, report. He wanted that report. Have a report? I don't know. Well, I guess, for clarification here tonight, what, what do you want us just to deny? Well, um, what I'm, I'm suggesting is that you reverse my denial of this first appeal, which will allow me to release the attachment from the city attorney. And the second part would be to affirm the denial of the second appeal. Okay. okay. So and that's the, the right. correspondence between the attorney and the former mayor? Yes. Okay. Which would be good. Okay, just so we get it straight. That's why I don't want any. I have a question. So that I understand correctly, was this the email that I had Mr. Sluggett read in full when we were in closed session? Do you recall? No. Yes. Oh, it was? Okay. Just so we know what we're releasing, we don't. Well, that would be the email we're not releasing. 
Just so when we make this motion, you need to be very available to make sure that wording is correct for that motion. If you read my report, Jerry, um, I'm just trying to get to it. <laughs> if you just make that motion, that's okay. Take care of everything. So when you say you're changing it, you're not changing it from what's in here. No, just she's just right. She's okay. already denied. Right. Got the, it. Now we're changing from what you told him previously. You're going to reverse the denial of the first appeal. Got it. I'm going to affirm the denial of the second appeal. Got it. And after that, we need to uh, add an item J, which is the um, proposed memo of understanding between the city and the uh, North Country Trail Association. Um, and I have copies to council. Okay. Okay. That's item J. Um, I, did, I was able uh, to have the, that reviewed by the city attorney. Right. He doesn't see any uh, insurmountable issues. His only comment was um, in one section, the MOU says it does not create any contractual rights or obligations which is fine. But then it goes on to North Country Trail shaft, City of Cedar Springs shafts. Okay. So he said, you know, his thing was, you know, I don't, I don't know how you would resolve that, you know, if, there, if a conflict did arise. But we have a 90 day out. Yeah. And so he wasn't overly concerned. Mr. Mayor, I mean, well, go ahead, Ted. So that's it. I mean, we can look at changing the word shall to something else. Okay, great. I know there's been a lot of work on this by you and Mr. Clark and Mr. Cole, and it's great that we have something in front of us. I just wanted to mention that uh, Carolee got word from uh, that, uh, from, from um, Chuck, Chuck Vanette, Charles Vanette. And he said he was fine with the uh, 30 days. Okay, that's fine. So we're good with that. Yeah. And I, yeah, that that shall does sound a little strong, doesn't it? But you know, thought of that. if we get out in 30 days, if they push us on shall, we can just drag our heels for 30 days and get out. It's all like plan. Yeah. I, well, I, and I was going to say, as I'm reading yeah. what the Cedar Springs shall do, continue to work with to enable the nature-based tourism development. Like I don't, it's not really. It, it seems like the most demanding time, thing. Please. Oh, I'm sorry. Just so we keep moving. Okay, Jerry, no, what you say? Um, go ahead. I, I, okay, you. I'm done. Just, I'm just saying that the shalls don't seem like. It, it seemed like the most demanding thing was that we put a link to their site on our site, which to mm -hmm. me doesn't seem like a lot. Yeah. So. No. No, and it's not. But you know that's why we have the attorney review it from a legal standpoint. He said, you know, he's pointing out that there is a conflict or a potential conflict. Mm -hmm. So if we have the 30 days. That's our way out. Yeah. Great. Right. So we'll have to add that as J. Okay. Uh, thank I report uh, really excited to know that, to find out that uh, Sergeant Kelly was selected as Kent County Deputy of the Year. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah. very deserving. Woohoo! So we were pretty happy. And, and uh, of course, he took a healthy ration of ribbing when it, when it sure. got back here. You know, there was some happiness <laughs> here and a few other people. Got after a little bit. Reminder that we have a uh, special council meeting on August or April 30th for our budget workshop. We'll also have to add to that agenda the, the award of the bids for the bid for the USDA water project. We have a pre construction meeting today. Um, is it the 22nd? Yes. 22nd is going to be bid openings, and we need to get that turned around so we can remain on schedule. Um, because it's an extremely tight schedule right now because of all the new easements we had to create that put us back along quite a while. So uh, we'll need to get that approved so we can meet the timetable for construction of this construction season. So that'll be there. 
I'm okay. I can be here for the opening if you wish. I'm not ahead for Detroit River the next day. Uh, when I read that, I thought, now, we're going to have that next meeting or at the uh, budget meeting. At the budget meeting, budget workshop. So do we need to just plan to waive our regular uh, two-stage uh, before action policy for that particular act? I think it's appropriate. Yeah, I do, too. That one, yeah. That would orchestrate moving it right to the front, any major project like that. If, if, you, if you don't waive it, then we're going to yeah, we're behind face, up, right. face the, the same possibility of not completing the project in time Perfect, perfect. Plus, we've already, dis we've already discussed it. It's already been discussed. It's not like the first time it's yeah. Yeah. That's not the theme. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. So yeah, we have seen uh, Tom and I went or the to that meeting with this display pad, the right place. Uh, MEDC, West Michigan Regional Planning Commission. Had a very, very good meeting. Uh, we went in thinking we had a fairly good shot at a road extension. Uh, didn't really like our odds for a water and sewer extension. Uh, but had a great conversation, and uh, I think it's got legs. We've got some things to do. Uh, we've already met with um, the, with uh, West Michigan Regional Planning Commission representative. He gave us what he terms is one pager, which will help him then get started on a, a memo that he has to run up to his regional supervisor, which I don't know if it's worth anything or not, but I worked with that guy in Alpena. He was actually our uh, economic development director while I was there. So we have a little bit of a uh, in there. So, even the, the gentleman from the right place was very optimistic about our chances for the whole project. Huh? So, we uh, we had the uh, pre bid conference today. We asked uh, Chris Beck to stay afterwards, told them what we needed to do. So, they're going to put some work into that to get us to, to further define the numbers that we need. So it'll cost a couple of thousand dollars, but it's well worth it for them to narrow down the scope of the project, which would be really nice because then we could open that area up for uh, expansion for industrial property. There's there's a dearth of available industrial buildings for sale in, in, in this area, and there's just nothing. And that means they're going to have anybody who wants to expand or relocate, they're going to have to build. Mm -hmm. We, you know, what's attractive about that location, number one, is that we have the, we're only a mile or so off the expressway. We have um, we have uh, accessibility from Northland Drive, you know. So we got that. The other thing too is that whole area being the old uh, sewage lagoons is brownfield, mm -hmm. which brings in other uh, incentives for companies that would relocate there. So. If you if you look at developing in a, in a brown field versus a green field, right. brown field is usually better because there's it, there's more benefits tax benefits that a company can realize. So we're optimistic. I don't know how long the process will take, but we've got a couple of years to to get it done. Uh, next is our. Code enforcement officer has been working very diligently with tractor supply and you'll see some very uh, significant improvements there. You've probably already seen them uh, so far, but we have an agreement that's with tractor supply that would basically say we'll allow them to keep their fenced in outdoor storage area, but they have to put screening on it so you can't see into it. Nothing can be above the top of the fence. They can only have six trailer stored in the lot and they have to run um, along uh, in the straight north of, of the, the east line of the storage area. So off that northeast corner they can run going up this direction towards the building. The, 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 all those gates and things are on the west side of the building stacked up there. Mm -hmm. They have to move those or they have to fence and screen that area. I think they're probably going to move those around to the back because they have a loading area back there and I don't think 
uh, that they were, are going to want to compromise their ability to get back in there. And then uh, they have to keep all of their other items for display up against the building. And so basically it's just bringing them into compliance with our code. And they've been surprisingly easy to work with. Uh, we, we also work with quality farm and garden. I noticed that they had started to store some stuff in the parking lot. I stopped and talked to them and the code force officer followed up on it. They moved all of those things back to the side of the building and their intent is they're going to have an outdoor display area there. So they're going to be conforming to our ordinances, which is uh, nice to do. So we're happy with that. I uh, asked an update from Solon Township about their fire study. Uh, about all they've done is nothing more than the last update. They've identified the, the um, consultant. It's on his schedule, but the person I really needed to talk to, their clerk was not in this week. But uh, Bob Ellis said it's on the schedule. He didn't know exactly what the timeline was going to be, but he would get back to me. So they're still moving forward to, on it. A reminder that we have our Open Meetings Act and Parliamentary uh, Procedure Training, and that's going to be May 28th at 630. So I'll remind you again next month, but just keep thinking about it. And everybody has uh, their budgets. Some of the binders and those are going to have to put, didn't bring some binders without to put them in themselves. Excuse me, and I don't want to go into a, a lot of detail here because that's what we're going to do to do at our budget workshop. Uh, a couple of things I want to point out. Number one, we've got about three weeks or so before our budget workshop. Spend some time on it. If you've got questions, give us a call. Myself or Deb, we would certainly answer any questions you might have. If you want to come down and, and uh, talk with us, we'd uh, welcome that opportunity. Just a couple of things. The millage rate is the same. It does not change. Uh, the, the general fund budget increased by about $6,500, which is not a big increase at all. But at least it's going the right direction. Yes. Um, the big thing is we're not using any of our fund balance, oh. which is good. Uh, so what that means is that our general fund revenues matches our expenditures. Uh, our fund balance would remain virtually the same at... Uh, $881,000, or about 54%. Now remember, some of that is designated, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the majority is unassigned. So the city's policy is to maintain 20% uh, fund balance. Unassigned. unassigned. Yeah. So we're there. Mm -hmm. In terms of the, the police savings, we're looking at about 21,000 is what we're forecasting. Now, I know that, you know, we were talking maybe 100,000 or whatever, but, you know, the, one of the biggest things is, is that we, we don't have enough history, nor does the Sheriff's Department, to really know what the costs are going to be. So we're continually using their worst case scenario. So we believe it's going to come down. The other thing that's, that's um, contributing to the less savings that we anticipated is that we still have to continue to make pension contributions for our uh, former police officer employee, police department employees. So regardless, I mean, worst, worst case scenario, we're, we're still saving $21,000 in getting quality service. So that's good. Uh, we do have uh, a number of projects that we're going to include in the budget, and if you can really quickly look at task 23, we can... I can highlight some of those. Um, we're looking at paving the parking lot by the library. There's a one corner that is not paved. Mm -hmm. and that's, since I've been here, I've heard about that from council that we'd like to get that done. And that's in this year's budget, correct? No. I thought that was added in. No. Okay. Um, we're also have money allocated for replacing the carpet in City Hall. Uh, roof replacement on this part of the building, uh, veterans markers and signs, drain tiles at the cemetery, have money for the, the city portion of the county upgrade to the storm drain, 
We have the $5,000 for the gazebo. We also have $5,000 in this year's budget for the gazebo because we didn't know when that was going to happen. And then it looks like we'll probably pay it out of this year's budget. So that'll be another $5,000 that we'll, we'll have available in next year's budget to do something. Um, we have the grant match for Trout Unlimited for the project of the North Park. We have the 10000 for the turnout gear. We said we were going to put in the fund balance so that the turnout gear uh, is no longer usable. We have the money to pay for it. Uh, we're reimbursing the motor vehicle fund for the rescue vehicle that we purchased. That's $12,000. $20,000 uh, uh, to go to our fund balance for our county fire truck. We want to start working towards that. We're increasing the fund balance for for the rescue vehicle. Again, we got to pay back what we borrowed from the, the motor vehicle fund. And then at the same time, we have to put money away so that's available. Sure, for the next one. Um, we have money for uh, working on our website. Uh, we have money for a strategic or visioning session that we will have. Uh, we have money for our five-year uh, master plan update. And then something else that we're doing is we're putting away an additional $10,000 towards our unfunded pension liability. Uh, when we when we close down our um, uh, local development fund that we had, and we eliminated that, we had some monies there, quite a bit of money, and after we dispersed it back to the various uh, taxing units proportionally, the city ended up with about $175,000. So we designated that for our unfunded liability, which at the last valuation was $318,000. So we want to start putting more money away so we can at some point in the in the future be able to say we've covered our liabilities and our pension program. We're also hoping as as the stock market you know the economy goes, we'll get better returns that will help offset that too. So the three hundred thousand that we owe is the total. Not counting the hundred and seventy five thousand that we put in, correct? It's not three hundred thousand on top of the hundred and seventy five thousand. No, no, we have we have about at the last valuation of about three hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. And we've designated a hundred and seventy five to go towards That's meeting that three hundred and eighteen thousand dollar obligation. Sure. So So we have about a hundred and twenty five left. Give or take. Yep. I understand. Yep. 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 Good. Yep. So you know we're we're thinking um, that we're going to be somewhere around the 12 to 15 years if we do 10,000 a year. Sure. And and then taking into account no difference in performance of our investments will have. Stock market crash. So uh, yeah. I, I will say we're in very good shape compared to the majority of. Yeah, I was going to say, didn't the accountant mention that, that there's yeah. going to be a new policy coming in that you have to meet, it's 50% of the... Well, what you have to do is you have to start at least pointing out in your financial statements what your uh, unfunded liabilities are. Because too often it was kind of not brought out there. So, and you know, one of the things too is that this community has always funded whatever your actuarial study set should fund for a given year. Again, other communities have turned their back on that and funded. So, I think uh, Cedar Springs has been funding to the degree recommended by our actuary. So that's really helped out too. So we're doing a good, we're doing a good job with keeping that funded. So that's all I had to uh, report on. Good. Yeah. Do you, do you have any update on the Cedar Creek meeting? Is any, anything we have to have a meeting tomorrow. Um, Independent Bank had reached out to me. They were interested in doing something. Um, Carol Lee Cole is interested in, in possibly getting the uh, building development team together. We're going to meet tomorrow morning, uh, but now it's postponed to Monday.
And I think we're going to get something to do. I've something done. I've talked to, to Julie on some ideas I have on different Thank approaches you. to it. Um, so okay. we're hoping to have something. I'm good. Okay, cool. Thanks. Twice. I must be. Yeah, I'm not sure you're making 